Hi, this is Hussein Hashemi from the University of Southern California, here to give a short presentation on millimeter wave transceivers. Strictly speaking, millimeter waves refers to a frequency range between 30 gigahertz and 300 gigahertz, where the wavelength of electromagnetic wave is between 1 to 10 millimeters. Now, on the commercial side, sometimes you hear millimeter waves referred to as any frequency that is about 6, 7, 8 gigahertz, which are referred to as radio frequencies. However, for the purpose of this presentation, we'll keep millimeter wave definition to any frequency between 30 and 300 gigahertz plus minus some percentage. The advantage of using millimeter waves is that at these frequency range, there is more frequency spectrum available to us. As such, you can allocate more bandwidth per user, hence get higher communication capacity based on Shannon's capacity theorem. On the other hand, in millimeter waves, the wavelength of electromagnetic wave is shorter compared with radio frequencies. This will have two profound effects. Number one, there will be more propagation attenuation through the objects, which would mean that if you start communicating in millimeter waves in a given room, the room adjacent to you may not receive the signal. Now, this can be an advantage in that you can reuse the frequency in multiple rooms without causing in-channel interference. On the other hand, shorter wavelength would correspond to narrower antenna beam width, which would now mean that you can have a higher resolution in imaging and higher selectivity for wireless communications. There are many envisioned or already existing deployed commercial millimeter wave wireless systems. Some of them are listed in this slide, separated by the IEEE designation of frequency band from Ka to V, W, and G from roughly 30 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz, and some applications. You can see that roughly these applications vary from imaging and sensing such as the airport scanners that are used commercially, missile seekers that are used in military and car radar, to wireless communications such as unlicensed and licensed communications. We're all familiar with the unlicensed communications in the 60 gigahertz frequency range and also the newly released licensed communication bands by the FCC around 27 and 37 gigahertz for the envisioned upcoming 5G wireless standards. At frequencies above 110 gigahertz or in G-band, there are envisioned applications still at the research state for radar, short-range wireless communications, as well as biomedical systems. There are technological challenges associated with realization of millimeter wave systems. First of all, on the actives, there is a fundamental trade-off between the transistor's breakdown voltage and the speed. In other words, Technology scaling would give us transistors that operate at higher speed. However, that comes at the expense of lower breakdown voltage. Lower breakdown voltage in turn would translate to lower output power that we can generate from a transistor, smaller linearity, and lower phase noise if you use these transistors in an oscillator because the swing is going to be limited. On the passive side, capacitors at radio frequencies are typically considered to be ideal components. However, in millimeter waves, that's not the case. The parasitics of the capacitors would result in a quality factor that would be in the order of 5 to 10, maybe at most 20, for capacitors value that would be around uh, 100 to 200 femtofarads or so. Spiral inductors would continue to be a problem from radio frequencies to millimeter waves in that their quality factor is going to be limited to something between 10 to 20 even if you optimize the size, optimize the geometry for a given value of the inductor that you desire. Given the shorter wavelength of millimeter waves, you can also use transmission lines whether single-ended or differential to be able to transfer the electromagnetic signal from one side of the chip to another side of the chip or also to realize some of your resonator structures or inductors and capacitors. Multiple transmission lines can be envisioned as shown in this slide, both as single-ended and differential. And in both cases, again, the quality factor limited by the material properties would be somewhere in the order of 5 to 10. On the circuit side, I am listing three fundamental components that are often used in communication transceivers and their trade-offs as the frequency moves up to millimeter wave range. 
low noise amplifiers would start having a higher noise figure because fundamentally the device's minimum achievable noise figure increases the frequency. And at the same time, the maximum available small signal gain of transistors reduces with frequency. On the power amplifiers, large signal power gain and power added efficiency both degrade with frequency to the point that the PAE is going to be significantly worse than efficiency at millimeter waves compared with radio frequencies. Oscillators is another big challenge for millimeter wave circuits in that the maximum oscillation frequency or F -os max in this slide is always a function of oscillator topology and transistor technology. This means that while the transistor maximum power gain frequency can be all the way up to F max, this doesn't necessarily mean that the oscillator can oscillate at that frequency. You would have to pick a topology that enables reaching that maximum frequency. Both oscillator amplitude and phase noise degrade at the as the oscillation frequency reaches the maximum possible oscillation frequency of a topology, and the phase noise of millimeter wave oscillators is often low because of the low quality factor of varactors at these frequencies. Uh, both oscillators and frequency dividers challenge the realization of frequency synthesizers. If one cannot achieve a low phase noise oscillator at the fundamental frequency. There are two approaches that can be selected. One approach shown on the left hand side would be referred to as multiple push oscillator, in this example triple push oscillator, where the harmonics of these oscillators are added up in a particular filter so that a harmonic of the fundamental frequency can be taken out as a desired local oscillator signal. Or an oscillator output can be given to an explicit multiplier, a tripler, doubler, quadrupler, etc., so that you can extract the higher order harmonics. As I said before, realization of reactors with high quality factor is a challenge in millimeter waves, hence it's very difficult to realize oscillators that can span a wide frequency range. As such, it is quite often to realize oscillators that have resonators that are switchable, so you can switch between one tank versus another to cover a wide frequency range. Finally, in order to reduce the phases of oscillators, a common approach in millimeter waves would be to couple oscillators, and it can be proved that in such a scheme, the phases would reduce as the number of coupled oscillators increases. On the frequency dividers, static digital frequency dividers would fail to operate at millimeter waves. So the alternative approaches might include realization of dynamic latches or injection lock schemes that are very common in millimeter waves and it can be realized as narrow band frequency, injection lock frequency dividers as well as distributed versions. Millimeter wave power amplifiers is a very big challenge because we cannot achieve high power while operating at these high frequencies because of the low breakdown voltage of transistors. In order to increase the output power, there are two approaches. One is transistor stacking, where a lot of transistors are placed on top of each other so that you can achieve a higher swing at the load. Or alternatively, there are many power combining schemes from transformer-based power combining scheme, current and voltage, to Wilkinson power combining, transmission line based current combining, or spatial power combining that's particularly attractive at millimeter waves because the size of antennas would reduce with frequency. Transmitters can be realized as Cartesian and polar, both in analog version or digital version. Naturally, digital versions are better in terms of frequency scaling. One thing to be careful is that in millimeter waves, given the wide bandwidth that you would need to allocate for each user to get a higher data rate, polar architectures are specifically challenging because the bandwidth of the phase and amplitude modulated signals are oftentimes much more, maybe all the way up to five to 10 times higher compared with those of the I and Q signals. One specific approach that is deployed in millimeter wave systems is the concept of phased arrays, where you have a multi multiple antennas that are spatially apart, and each of them is driven by a different phase and amplitude of the same signal. It can be proved that the far field signal would be a function of these antenna spacing and the amplitude and phase of each signals. And then you can form arbitrary beams and scan it electronically. On the transmit side, this corresponds to higher achieved output power, and on the received side, phase arrays would result in a higher signal-to-noise ratio. 
Many architectures for phase arrays can be envisioned by placing the phase and amplitude shifters at all the way at the radio frequency in the transmitter and receiver to realization of phase and amplitude adjusters in the local oscillator path or to realization of all the beamforming functions in a digital domain. Now, while digital beamforming is the more most flexible of all these architectures, th that would challenge the realization of high-speed, low-power data converters. In summary, millimeter wave systems enable high-resolution imaging and high data rate communication application, whether it's wireless or guided. There are several technological challenges in realization of millimeter wave silicon circuits, including the low breakdown voltage of transistors and low quality factor of passive components, specifically capacitors. The smaller wavelength of millimeter wave frequencies enable realization of compact phased arrays that will increase the output power of transmitters and signal to noise ratio of the receivers and would offer spatial selectivity that can be used for interference mitigation. Some of the existing challenges for research in millimeter wave integrated silicon transceivers include realization of low phase noise, compact frequency synthesizers, and energy efficient transmitters. I hope you found this presentation useful. Thank you very much.